your saddle height could be wrong. It's easily done. Perhaps you used the wrong technique to set it up. Perhaps your seat post worked its way down over time. Or maybe you bought a new pair of shoes or a new saddle and forgot to account for those changes. Well, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to recognize the problem and how to set it up right every time. If you change your shoes, your soles could be up to 10 mil thicker, which means you'll need to change your saddle height to accommodate for that change. If you change your cleat position, that could be five to 20 mil. And if you move it forward, that means you could be reaching in your furthest downstroke, which means you're gonna need to change your saddle height. If you're the sort of person to measure your saddle height from saddle to bottom bracket, then don't forget to accommodate for your crank arm length. If you change this and you change the number, it'll affect how high your saddle needs to be. Alternatively, get a new measurement from saddle to pedal height at its furthest point. Sometimes things just settle, or maybe a seat post works its way down over time and changes can go unnoticed. But if you notice any discomfort or any pain in the lower back or your knees, then it's a sure sign that you might need to start afresh and take stock of a new saddle height. If you get pain in your knee, perhaps the outside or the lower side of your knee, and it's almost always on one knee, this is often a good sign that your saddle is too high because what you'll end up doing is you'll end up reaching over on your saddle and reaching for one pedal. Now, this pain might not be there all the time. It might only happen when you push really hard or when you do long distances. It can be coupled with lower back pain as well. And that's often because your hips are reaching around the saddle to get to that pedal that's too far away and sometimes it can be coupled with hamstring strains as well. If your saddle is too low then your hips won't be correctly in line with your quadriceps or this thigh muscle here in order to drive power through the top of your pedal stroke and all this force may go straight into your knees. So if you're getting any pain in your hips or perhaps you're getting knee pain at the top of your knee or just knee pain in both of your knees that might be an indicator that your saddle is too low and you need to raise it a little bit. At this stage, I think it's important to note that everyone is different. Some people experience the same pain for different reasons, and some people could have the same problem and experience different pain. I also think it's really important to note that bike fitting is a bit of a process. It's not a one-time event. You may need to change this a couple of times to find that sweet spot. Also, don't make big changes to your saddle height. Anything from five to 10 mil could be a big change. Our bodies are really good at learning postures and adapting, and it may have learnt an incorrect posture that you will need to correct over time. Give it one to two weeks before you decide to change anything. Your body may have learnt an incorrect position. It may take time to learn the new position. The most common school of thought for saddle height is that you match your inseam or your heel to your sit bones with your pedal to your saddle height. And that should be done in your riding shoes. So effectively, when you sit on your saddle and you put your heel on the pedal, it should be fully extended, which means that when you put your foot or the ball of your foot in the proper pedal cleat position, then you'll have a slight kink to your knee. If you lean against a wall or you get on a turbo trainer, ideally, if you pedal backwards with your heel and you can't make a full rotation and the pedal gets away from you, that's a good indicator that your saddle is definitely too high. 
So to get your measurement, you're gonna need a tape measure, obviously, and you're gonna need to do this in your riding shoes. Your riding shoes could have anything from 10 to 20 mil stack on them, which you're gonna need to account for when you set your saddle height. Now, I've got a tape measure here. It would be ideal if you had a seamstress's tape measure because it's nice and flexible, but all you need to do is measure from your heel, the furthest point, up to your sit bones, which is right in the crotch area at that furthest point. And then take note of that number because you're gonna be matching your saddle to your pedal height when it's at its furthest point. Now, bonus tip for you here. If you have a broom or a stick, you might want to wrap that around your measuring tape and really get it in there because when you sit on your saddle and you release all of your body weight, then you'll be fully on your sit bones and you do want to accommodate for that when you take your measurements. Otherwise, you may have underestimated by up to 10 mil. So I've just measured my inseam in my shoes at 79 centimeters, and I want to match that on my saddle to pedal height. But what does that mean? They need to be at their furthest point for starters. So your pedal needs to be rotating backwards until you find it at its furthest point. You may have to use your measuring tape to see where it's at its longest, and then work out where you sit in your saddle. So I know I usually sit in this little channel here, so I'm gonna put my tape there, because if you put it on the nose or if you put it at the back of your saddle, that could be 10, 20, maybe even 30 mils difference. So they're my two points at their furthest point, and I've also made sure that my seat post is a little loose so that I can move it up and down a couple of mil at a time. Right, so that looks about spot on. All I need to do is make sure that saddle is dead straight and tighten up this seat post bolt and I'm good to go. Well, there we have it, all done and dusted. Although don't forget what I said about the fact that this isn't a one-time thing. It may be more of a process that you're gonna have to tinker with. And I know that sounds lengthy, but it's a lot quicker than recovering from an injury, trust me. Now, let us know down in the comments below if you've used this method, how did you get on? And if you use something different, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.